Hey guys, my name is Deb Marnie and I'm from Aussie Mail and this is our Chain Mail tutorial channel. Hey guys, big hi, hello, welcome, how are you? Thanks for popping in and seeing me today. It's great to catch up with you. Okay, so today I've got another weave tutorial for you and this one is called a chronic helm weave. So as you can probably guess, it is a variant of the helm weave. All right, guys, let's just jump straight into it. Okay, guys, so I've made up some sample pieces of the chronic helm weave to show you. So coming up here on the side of the screen will be the ring sizes that I used to make these particular samples up. And you will also be able to find them in the description section, which is down underneath this video. But to run through them quickly with you. So our first one over here is our 14 gauge AWG. So that's 1.6 millimeter diameter wire. And the ring IDs here were 9.5 millimeters for the large rings and for the smaller rings six millimeters uh, the next one is the 16 gauge awg or 1.2 millimeter diameter wire version the large rings were 7.5 millimeter id and the small rings are 4.75 millimeters the 18 gauge version one millimeter diameter wire the large rings were six millimeters and the small rings are 3.75 millimeter id and lastly the 20 gauge awg version 0.8 millimeter diameter wire the large rings on these ones are 4.75 millimeters and the small ones are three millimeters i did find this particular weave quite finicky and picky with the rings there isn't really a lot of wriggle room um, outside of the rings that I have used here but have a little bit of play with it you might be able to find others that work just as well for you but those ring sizes that I've given you are a really good starting point okay so to start this weave we're going to make up some little units that are one large ring one small ring and that's all they are so go ahead and make some of those up uh, you'll need uh, several to make the bracelet so for the 20 gauge version which is what I'm working in here you'll need let me see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen about 15 of these units made up for a 20 centimeter or 8 inch bracelet but you can make them up as you go along so don't feel that you have to do that many in advance in, you can make up, you know, five and do them in lots of five or whatever, but you'll need approximately 15 in the 16 gauge uh, version. So I'm using the 7.5 millimeter here for the large rings, and I'm going to add a little bit of color, and I'm using 3 16 of an inch or 4.76 millimeters, which is close or almost identical to the 4.75 millimeter that I suggested at the beginning of the video. So go ahead, make up some of these units, and uh, when you've done, done them, come back and I'll show you what the next step is. Oh, and as a quick re uh, side thing, especially if you're new to Chainmail, I would suggest opening up some of your large rings as well. It'll just make weaving go a little bit easier. This weave is a little hands-on. You do have to hold uh, rings in place before you slip a, a large locking ring in so you may find it easier if these are already opened for you so you don't have to try and hold your ring in place and open up in the middle of weaving so um, again do whatever floats your boat guys but my suggestion is get some of these large ones pre-opened as well okay so once you've got all your rings prepared we want to start weaving them together so to start this weave we're going to start with a two of our small rings on our large on a large ring so go ahead and do that now and then once you've got that done pick up one of your prepared small and large ring units and we want to sit that inside of the large ring that we just closed up and then holding that into place take up one of your opened large rings 
and slip through the small ring only. Okay, and that locks it all into place for you. Okay, so your work is looking like this at the moment. Now what we want to do is we want to move these two loose small rings here and bring them inside our pair of large rings. Okay, so we just want to slip those in there. Now this is fiddly. This whole weave is fiddly, guys. My thumbs are going to get in the way. I will try to keep them out of the way as much as possible. Um, please don't complain at me that they're there. I have to hold onto the rings. Um, I'm not a magical being and they don't float in the air by themselves. All right, so as you can see, I am fighting with this a little bit, but moving those rings into position, okay, like this. I'm now going to take a twist tie and I'm going to feed it through my two rings. Now if you don't have a twist tie you can grab one of your small clasp attachment rings or, or any ring really. Um, the smaller the better so that it holds it tightly in place and it just holds it there like that. Okay so once you've got your work looking like this we want to again take up another one of our prepared units and I'm going to slip it in inside the last large ring that we placed. Okay, so that the small ring sits inside. Now, I haven't worked out a trick to this. Sometimes it goes as smooth as butter, bang, first go, no worries. Other times I struggle with it. So just persevere with it, guys, and get that small ring in there. And then taking up one of our opened large rings, we're going to pick up just that ring from the unit. So not the ring that's already in weave, the ring that you've just slipped inside. We want to lock that in place. Okay, so that it looks like this now. Okay, so once we've got our work to this stage, we want to add two more small rings into our weave and we're going to put them in here and in here in the large ring. So the easiest way to do that is actually to flip those end pair of large rings aside and then taking up our colored rings we're going to pop one in the middle there of the pair that's already in weave. Sorry about that. One in the middle of the pair that's already in weave. Close that up. And then we want to pop the other one on the outside here. Okay. So we take up our second open ring and we pop it through the outside of that large ring so it sits on the outside of the two that are already in weave and then we want to fold our large rings up over the top of those two rings so that they encircle them okay and then we're going to lock that into place by grabbing another small ring and slipping it through the big rings keeping it in the middle of the two small rings that we just placed. Okay. So your work should look like this. Next, we're going to take up an opened large ring and we're going to feed this Similar to Helm, if you un if you have done Helm before, and if you haven't, I'd really suggest checking out our basic Helm video. I'll pop a link up here in the corner for you. We're going to slip it in between our two large rings while picking up the two small rings that are in weave and coming out the other side and encircling our small ring here. So what that looks like is we go in between our large rings. We're not going through our large rings. We're going between them. 
we go through the pair of small rings and we pop out the other side of the large ring and then we come all the way around and encircle that locking small ring and then we close that up okay so our work should look like this all right so once you've got your work looking like this we're going to take up another one of our prepared units and again we're going to slip that in the bottom now a point I want to make here is make sure that you're maintaining uh, the the same face towards you all the time if I was to slip this around like this to the other side and then put my ring in in the same position you can see that these rings here in our single doubles are going to be heading in opposite directions so I mean that looks great when it's not a problem and I don't even know that may be another weave with a different name I'm not sure but that's what will happen if you switch your the side facing you when you place these ring units the weave as it stands in male artisans these unit these rings all face the same way so we want to make sure that we maintain that pattern so if you want to double check you just go back here to your other unit your first unit here where the large ring is notice how those rings are positioned and place this new unit appropriately so again slipping the large ring in underneath this the large ring that's already in weave sticking that small ring through so like I said that part is really fiddly guys do the best you can with it until it pops through enough for you to grab another one of your large rings and just capture that ring that we put through there not the one that's already in weave just that one that we put in and then close that up and your work should look like this so now we want to place two more small rings so I'm going to grab hold of my work and flip those rings open so that I've got easy access to this large center ring and I'm going to grab a small ring I'm going to put it between the first one between our two small rings already in weave but going through that large ring close that one up and then I'm going to pop the other one over here to the outside of our pair of small rings going through the large ring as well there okay and then once I've got those two rings in position I fold my large rings over the top of them and capture them in place okay and then to lock them all down I take up another one of my small rings I feed it through the two large rings in between the two small rings that we just placed okay so the small rings don't go through small rings but they do sit in between okay and then once you've got that ring placed you'll need to take up another opened ring opened large ring sorry this one goes between the end pair of large rings scooping up those small rings as you travel through okay coming out the other side and encircling our single small ring there okay so your work should look like that now we want to I'm just going to open up one of these large rings in preparation we want to take up one of our prepared units again I'm making sure that these rings are following the pattern of the previous units I'm slipping my large ring in underneath pushing that small ring up through the large ring that's in weave okay and then taking up my large opened ring I'm going to capture just that small ring of our new unit okay and lock that into place 
and our work. Whoops. There we go. And our work should look like this. Next step is to add the next two rings in the pattern, which are these two rings here. So we're going to hold on to our work. We're going to let that pair of large rings slip open a little bit. And then we're going to place our first small ring through that center large ring so that it nestles in between the two small rings already in weave. Close that up. Then taking up another opened small ring, we're going to go through that large ring again, this time on the outside of our pair of rings. Close it up. And then we want to position our rings so that the large pair fold over the top of our small rings. And our small rings are nestled in there. And then to lock that all into place, we take up another small ring, we feed it through our pair of large rings, making sure that it sits in between the two small rings that are in place. And then we close that up. Okay, our work looks like this. We take up another open large ring. We go between the two large rings there on the end, scooping up those small rings as we pass through them. So just going straight through there, coming out the other side and circling that single small ring in weave and closing it up. Okay, so you just continue along like that. I will show you once more because it can be a little confusing and a little tricky. So we've got our weave like this and our next step is to take up one of our prepared ring units, slip it so that the large ring sits underneath our last ring in weave and that our, that small ring pops up inside. Now you need to make sure that these rings are maintaining the pattern that is already in place with the previous unit. So just take a look back at these previous units. So this one here and this one here and this one here. And you can see that that pattern is being maintained, but I haven't inadvertently turned it around the wrong way and those patterns are now um, broken and going in the opposite direction. So once you're happy with the placement of that ring, you want to lock it in place. So to do that, take up one of your opened large rings and feed it through just that small ring on that unit that you're adding. Don't go through the ring that is already in weave, just the small one that we're adding. And we're going to close that up. And your work should look like this. Next, we're going to add these two small rings that you can see here. We're going to add them to our work. So to do that, we grab hold of our work there by the body. Uh, flip those large rings so there's one either side. We're going to place these small rings on this large ring here that's in the center. The first one goes so that it is positioned in between the small rings that are already in weave. Okay. And then once you've placed that one, we're going to place another one here on the outside of those rings here on the right. So just feed it through there like that. And then once you've placed those rings, we're going to bring our large rings back so that they fold over the top of the small rings we just added. And then to lock those in place, we're going to take up another small ring. It goes through just those large rings, but it is nestled in between the small rings that are in weave. Okay, so your work should look like this. We now want to place that center large ring. So taking up an open large ring, it goes between the large rings that are already in weave, scooping up our small rings as we pass through to the other side. 
Okay, so straight in between, all the way through, popping out the other side, never once going through a large ring, but picking up the small rings and then encircling that single ring on top. So when you put it through here, make sure you're not picking up three rings with that large ring. You're only picking up those that pair of rings there. Okay, once you've got your work like this, take up one of your prepared rings, units, pop it through the bottom there, making sure that that little ring sticks up so that you can grab a large ring and capture it and lock it all in place. Okay, then we add our two small rings. We put them through our large center ring. First one in between the pair of small rings that were already in weave. The other one sits here on the right side of those rings. Close it up. Once you've placed your two small rings, you carefully fold over your large rings so that they encircle the two rings that you just placed and you lock all of that in place with another small ring that goes through just your large rings but sits in between the small rings there in weave and you just keep repeating those steps guys until you've reached the length that you require and once you've done that you will have made a piece of chronic helm weave all right, my lovelies, well, that is it. That is the video tutorial for today. I hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up here on YouTube. Share the video if you like. You can leave any comments or questions down below in the comment section that you can find underneath this video. If you're not a subscriber, you might want to consider doing that first. That would be awesome. Uh, check out some of the other content while you're here. We've got a lot for you to look at. And last but not least, guys, don't forget to give our shop link up here in the corner a little bit of love and attention. That's where we sell the bits and bobs and what's and jigs you're going to need to whip up this weave and many of the others we showcase. All right, guys, thanks once again for popping in and seeing me. It was great to catch up with you. And hopefully I will see you again sometime in the very near future. Okay, bye.